It was supposed to be a new year, a post-pandemic 2022, one where we put the pandemic behind us. Instead, it is the year of a new variant, one that is wreaking havoc across the world. Omicron is currently shaking the globe to its core, thanks to crippling staffing shortages caused by the variant. Hospitals across the world are running out of staff as infected doctors and nurses go into self-isolation. U.S. hospitals are dealing with their own staffing setbacks, with the staff further strained with this new virus wave. Another problem is more people coming to the hospital seeking tests after waiting for hours at multiple COVID-19 testing sites. In the UK, NHS medics were urgently called back from the holiday or the days off, mostly to keep hospitals running amid the healthcare crisis. More than 100,000 employees were off sick on Christmas Day. One in every 10 NHS staff members were off sick or self-isolating as a result of contracting the infection during the festive season. The UK government has revealed plans for an army-style reservist force, one of the NHS can call on amid periods, one that the NSS can call on amid periods of high pressure. In Australia, COVID-19 positive nurses are forced to work as New South Wales hospitals deal with severe staffing shortages. COVID-19 positive nurses were recalled to work in hospitals, a massive breach of the state health protocols as the hospital resorted to desperate measures. At one Sydney hospital, COVID-19 positive nurses seem to be limited to working in COVID wards. However, at others, nurses said they were treating non-COVID-19 patients as well. As for the emergency services, the situation is similar. In France, more and more police officers are contracting the infection. Around 25% of the national police staff contracted COVID-19 since the pandemic started. 21% of the New York Police Department, or over 5,000 of the forces, 35,000 uniformed officers, were infected and self-isolating in the Big Apple. 30% of New York's emergency service staff and 18% of its 11,000 firefighters were also out sick. In Cincinnati, the mayor has declared a state of emergency last week, allowing the city's fire chief to adequately staff the department as the firefighters fall sick. In the UK, rubbish bins and recycling containers are overflowing. This is due to suspended collections across the country. Several councils up and down Britain have been forced to reduce or suspend services amid the staff shortages. Councils are now redistributing staff between essential services to keep everything smooth and running across Britain. Meanwhile, over 4,000 flights have been cancelled across the world. More than half of the flights were cancelled in the U.S., caused by staff shortages at various airlines across the country. More than 18,000 flights were even delayed, with the Chicago airport most affected due to the flight cancellations. In the U.S., the transit worker shortages forced a cut back to train services, including shutting down three train lines. Other train and bus routes also suffered across the U.S. It comes as a rail commuters returning to work across Britain this week. What most of them are facing are delays and cancellations. SEO Trail has become the latest operator in the country to move to a revised timetable due to COVID-19 related staff shortages. For businesses, it is a hard start to the new year to say the least. Several businesses have had to shut down because of the virus. Now they face more uncertainty in 2022. Chicago will require citizens to be vaccinated for restaurants and gyms, along with other indoor public places. In the UK, major chains are dealing with shortages as they move staff between stores. The labor shortage has dampened pandemic recovery for Canadian businesses with help wanted signs and job postings in storefronts across the country. In London, pubs and restaurants, the rates of COVID-19 infections have been particularly high. Half of the staff either sick or isolating. New York's already struggling restaurant industry has also been hit hard. Many establishments have been forced to shut down. Restaurants are facing serious challenges from a critical labor shortage to fewer customers. 
This new surge comes as students are returning to classrooms in the UK and the US. Ministers have told head teachers in England to start preparing for staff shortages. They have been asked to use support staff to fill in the gaps, combining classes or using hybrid learning with some classes taught remotely and some face to face. In the United States, more and more children are being hospitalized with COVID-19, with local officials trying to decide how to safely start the new semester. In Washington, D.C., public school students and staff need to show proof of negative test, a policy aimed at keeping schools open for in-person learning. Good morning. Let's go straight across now to Professor Azim Majid, who is joining us on the broadcast from London. Professor Majid is the head of the Department of Primary Care and Public Health at the Imperial College London. Thanks very much for being here with us. How can one balance economy and the spread of the Omicron variant is a huge cause of concern at this point. Uh, even as the UK Prime Minister, for instance, has said no further restrictions are necessary. What is your opinion on that? Um, good evening. So I think um, trying to balance the economy with health, I think, goes together. Uh, when you've got very high infection rates, uh, that does mean many workers being off work, whether they're uh, in the working in the health service, in areas like public transport or retail. So I think both of it go together. You must really work to suppress the infection. And when you've done that, your society then works more normally and your economy works more normally as well. But it's hard to do that when your infection numbers are very high, which is why you must get infection numbers down to a more manageable level as quickly as possible. All right, so in 2021, uh, lockdown was the norm, but uh, uh, things looking different uh, this time uh, around and uh, this year, uh, starting on a different note. Um, would you agree that as of now, lockdown measures are not the urgent need? Uh, yes, uh, yes, I would agree with that. I think if you compare ourselves now in, in the UK and Western Europe, to one year ago, things are now quite different. Uh, we've now got much higher uptakes of, of vaccines. So countries like the UK, uh, Denmark, uh, Spain, Portugal, a very uptake of vaccines, including booster doses. And we also have new drugs coming online, uh, new drugs for, to treat COVID-19, uh, both uh, by injection or by mouth. So I think it's now it's now more manageable, the pandemic, than it was a year ago, when we were very limited in what we could do. But now through vaccination and drugs, we can actually manage uh, the pandemic much better than a year ago, which means that we don't need the same level of uh, measures we had uh, in the previous year. All right. Well, the cases of Omicron are rising, but the severity is uh, less as per the data. Uh, what has been your assessment on that? Uh, so research from Imperial College and elsewhere uh, shows that Omicron, although it's more infectious, uh, does tend to cause a milder disease, so it tends to be um, less severe. Uh, less likely to result in hospital admission uh, and less likely to result in complications that might require treatment intensive care, for example. Uh, so that is all positive news. But the not so good news is that because the numbers of cases is so high, some people will, will still get a serious infection, even though overall the balance is t towards more towards more milder infection, uh, which is very good news because otherwise we would now have a very major pressure on our health service in the UK and in other countries where we've got high rates of Omicron infection. Should people take any specific precautions in the wake of the spread of this new variant? I think the main message is to get vaccinated. So if you've had three vaccinations, so your booster doses plus a booster, you're far more likely to have a milder illness than if you're not being vaccinated. Also take other measures as well to protect yourself. So wear a face mask when you go outside your house and indoor settings like shops or, or buses or trains. Uh, use a high quality mask, such as an FFP2 mask. Uh, try to limit your social interactions outside your household, uh, so work from home when you can, uh, avoid crowded indoor spaces, uh, and try to protect yourself through these measures of so vaccination, uh, high quality face masks, and try to reduce your exposure to, to risk by avoiding uh, crowded indoor settings. How important are booster doses uh, in the wake of the Omicron variant spread? Uh, so these are essential. Uh, research um, shows that um, with two doses of vaccine, uh, after a few months, your protection does decline uh, somewhat, more so uh, for Omicron than Delta or Alpha uh, variants. Um, but the booster does have a big effect on your on your protection. So by having a booster, you increase your antibody levels substantially, you improve your immune response substantially, and you reduce the risk of a serious illness substantially as well. So the third injection, the booster, is very, very important uh, to improve your protection from Omicron. 
Right. Just uh, to elaborate on this for our viewers, more mutations means that existing vaccines may not provide 100% protection. Uh, is that the case? No, so it's always possible that when new variants appear, as the virus mutates, we may get variants where vaccines are a bit less effective, like with Omicron. Uh, but we, did, we still find that for all the variants we've seen so far, uh, vaccines do protect against serious illness. So all of them may not stop infection as well as against other variants. Um, they still work well against serious illness. And in the future, within a few months, we should have new vaccines available that target Omicron much better than our current vaccine. So there is hope for the future we'll have better vaccines uh, very soon, within a matter of months probably. Professor, thanks very much once again for joining us on the broadcast. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.